So this is question two, help me video. Um, there are quite a few past questions out that mention sickle cell anemia and malaria, and a lot of the textbooks use it as an example. So we got sickle cell anemia and the affected haemoglobin tends to be fibrous rather than globular and it makes these sickle, sickle shapes. And that's it's, you know, quite often fatal if you are homozygous for the sickle haemoglobin. If you're heterozygous, so one normal and one sickle, then you do have a few symptoms, but uh, otherwise lead, lead a normal life. But it's not as, not as advantageous as, as not having it at all. Then we've got a separate thing going on with the malaria. So that infects, so malaria infects red blood cells and the parasite, the parasite grows and reproduces and actually then you know, bursts out of these red blood cells and infects other blood cells. And this bit down here, well, how having sickle trait helps um, resistance to malaria. Well, if you've got sickle traits, some of your haemoglobin is you know, not quite as good as normal haemoglobin. And the malaria parasite will invade. This will go sickle shape and then it's more liable for the blood, white blood cells, macrophages to you know, gobble it up, uh, phagocytosis and um, you know, thus destroying the malaria parasite. So that's how that works. What conclusion can be drawn from these results? Well, it's just looking at, you know, looking at these and going, well, if I've got sickle cell, what's my chances of being infected with malaria? So if I've got sickle cell, look at, compare these two. So not infected is a lot more than infected. Whereas in the normal, there's more infected. So just go, if we've got sickle cell trait, then I've got a more or less chance of being infected with the malarial parasite. Up here on the, on the right, part two, suggest how the survey could be modified to improve validity. This means, you know, the truth. Now, is it giving us the right result? And there are a couple of things you can do. So, you know, when you're thinking of improvements to any experiment, you can usually do something, you know, more results. I put that into better words. And think of some of your controlled variables. So, who are you testing? So, what, what could you suggest about the people that are tested to make it a more fairer test? So, common stuff in your you control the variables. Then we get on to the Hardy Weinberg. Some people did this no problem, some people just ignored it, and some people and got got halfway and, and gave up. The jobs that you need to do, so what information is it giving us? It's giving us uh, sickle cell disease occurs in one out of every 625. So that's sickle cell disease, that's um, these guys are homozygous for the you know, what, you know, the recessive allele. So these guys are these guys are Q squared. And so what you need to do is you're looking for what? You're looking for eventually the number that would have sickle cell trait. So sickle cell trait. So those are the the heterozygous. So that is our PQ. Our two PQ there. 
So, in your, your first step, you're trying to work out what you got. Q squared is this number here. So you can work out Q. So, then you can find out P. So, Q squared is that number there, 1 divided by 625. So then you can work out Q. You know that P plus Q equals 1. So then you can find out what P is. And now you know what P and Q are. You can do this to go 2PQ. That will give you the, pro the proportion. So sickle cell proportion and then that's like a fraction you need to factor it up for how many per thousand so sickle cell number per 1000 if that doesn't make any sense at all then uh, model answer video <laughs> we'll go through the whole thing and then uh, part C they could have done with spacing this out a bit better, couldn't they? Part C, we've got essentially the, the same genetic makeup of people. You know, some in Africa and some in America. The, the difference between Africa and America is Africa has more prevalence of malaria, so this parasite, whereas America does not. And so there's kind of two situations. With less malaria, what will happen to the sickle cell trait and why? With, yeah, and that's in the USA. So with not much malaria, you can imagine that having sickle cell trait is not a big advantage. Whereas in Africa, where there's lots of malaria, you know, lots of mosquitoes, then having the sickle cell trait will be uh, an advantage. And so you just need to put that into sort of a bit of natural selection theory as well in there.